Hey guys, it's Shaylin and I'm here today with another writing video. So today I'm doing a follow-up to a video that I did like two years ago by this point called Six Misconceptions I Had About Writing Craft. Today I'm bringing you five more things that I did not understand about writing craft. I think it's good to do these videos every once in a while and just kind of reflect, embrace, make fun of your mistakes and draw a lesson from them. Um, always on this channel I like to try and just like be frank and joke about my own mistakes because when you're learning any skill you're gonna do things wrong. Writing is no different. I think sometimes there's this pressure to be good immediately, to be gifted immediately, naturally gifted and just do it perfectly and you know all going to do things wrong and so these aren't just mistakes I made, these are things I didn't understand, like misconceptions I had, things that I thought you were supposed to do. I was doing these things on purpose. You know, not just something that like I was trying to do but I didn't have the skill. Something that I genuinely thought you were meant to do. I thought it made good writing. I was doing this intentionally and oh boy, I should not have been. <laughs> I started writing very young. A lot of these are things that I was doing as a teenager. You know what? It's fine. So let's just talk about it. If maybe my mistakes can be valuable for someone else to not make the same mistakes, maybe it will be worth the hundreds of thousands of very embarrassing words that are buried deep on my hard drive. Number one, every chapter should end on a cliffhanger. My first couple books, especially the first two, so stuff I wrote when I was between the ages of like 13 and 15, I felt that every single chapter had to end on a cliffhanger. And I wasn't even writing thriller. Like, I think if you're writing thriller, like a thriller, like it does actually kind of make sense to have that hook ending at the end of most chapters. But I was literally like, my first book was like a, I don't even know what genre, middle grade adventure mystery, maybe. And there was literally no reason why everything had to end on a cliffhanger. And so what I ended up doing, well, it, it caused so many problems. First of all, they were just forced. They were dumb cliffhangers, especially because I was 13. So it was just me trying to phrase something in like an eye-catching mysterious way at the end. But I ended up introducing a bunch of like random stuff just to be a cliffhanger and it like never went anywhere. I really thought that that was how a chapter was meant to end. I think I may have gotten this impression from TV. You know, this was before the streaming era. This was like, what, 2010, 11, 12. This was when you watched shows week by week. They didn't just appear all at once. Any drama that I was watching on TV, that's how the episodes would end, was with a cliffhanger. And so I think in my mind, episodic forms of storytelling ended with cliffhangers. And so I did that on purpose for several books. And now I'm anti-cliffhanger, like I, I don't think I write the right type of work for cliffhangers to benefit my pieces, so I don't really use them really at all. I literally used to force a cliffhanger at the end of every chapter. And it was painful. Number two is that I thought that the ability to write fast was the same as skill. I think this is something that I really felt in my later teens, you know, maybe around the ages of like 15 to 18. I think this happens on online, in the online writing community, and it was really at its peak around that time. Because everyone wants to feel like a good writer online, and they want to be validated as a good writer, and they want to be able to prove that they're a good writer. But if people aren't reading your work, you can't prove that you're a good writer. And so the only way people had to say, look, I'm a good writer, I know what I'm doing, is through the speed that they could write. And so I really felt that the faster I could write, that meant that I was skilled. And I think that this held me back in my development as a writer for a long time, actually, because I was so focused on writing fast, and in my mind that meant I knew how to write. I wasn't actually thinking about the skill because I was only thinking about how fast can I write this book. And you know what? I, to be fair, I learned how to write a book pretty fast. I could write a book in one to three months, which is wild to me now because it takes me like a year. And that's for a first draft to be clear. But obviously none of them were good. But because I genuinely felt that being able to write fast was a marker of skill, because I was able to write fast and write faster and faster with each book, I felt that I was progressing. You know, it's like, okay, well, the last book took me five months. This one took me three. Therefore, I've improved. And I set really high, ridiculous goals for how much I was going to write in a year. And it just really stalled my development as a writer because I wasn't focusing on the craft at all because I felt that 
the speed that I wrote was an indicator of skill and craft and it's really not. Those things aren't correlated at all. Some people write masterpieces and it takes them a very long time because that's their method. Some people can write really well really fast and I'm not saying that some people can't write very well very fast but the ability to write fast isn't an indicator of skill. That was a bad one. That one actually I think hurt my development for a long time. Number three, I felt that you needed to include like everything that happened to the character. I think that this is partly uh, an issue because I used to always write in first person present tense because I read pretty much exclusively YA as a teenager and almost all YA is written in first person present tense. That was just the most natural way for me to write and one really actually common problem in first person present tense that it can cause is a struggle to edit your own work edit out what's not important. Because you're following the character in the present as they do everything, it can be easy to include literally everything they do, even when that stuff isn't necessary. I would dedicate a lot of time to stuff that literally was pointless because it technically happened to the character. You know, a lot of travel between places. I put a lot of time into trying to explain technicalities of stuff that didn't matter. And especially as a teenager, my understanding of how certain things worked wasn't very good. And so I was trying to explain things that I didn't really understand because I was trying to explain, you know, the technicalities of these things. Like I remember having a scene in a, a, a novel that I wrote around the age of 18 where the main characters were at the hospital. And it was like a hospital in like a small town. And I was trying to explain like all the conversations and everything that they, all the conversations they had with like the doctor there and everything and I've never been in a hospital under that situation. So it was probably a very unnatural interaction and it, it probably wasn't realistic to how that medical system works. And also it didn't even need to be there. Like it really didn't need to be there. That whole scene like had, the only reason that scene was there is I felt that it had to be there because it did happen to the character and it had to be explained. I included a lot of stuff that did not need to be there because I really felt everything had to be included. Um, and I've learned now, like, you can skip stuff. <laughs> you can just skip it. If it's not important and it's just like a technicality and you can just skip to the next point where it gets interesting. But I really didn't know that you could do that. I remember stressing a lot over writing stuff that I didn't really know how to write, especially stuff that was eclipsed by my very young worldview and frame of understanding about the world. And it's like, I didn't even need to be writing that scene. Like I was worrying about how I wasn't going to write it accurately when I didn't even need to be writing it because it was pointless. <laughs> and going off of that number four, I felt that dialogue needed to be built up to naturally. Let's say I needed my characters to talk about a certain thing in their dialogue. Instead of just starting the conversation at that point, you know, where it gets interesting, I felt that I needed to build up to that point in the conversation naturally. So there would be like four pages of the characters talking about other things until they eventually got to the topic that I wanted them to be on. It was so awkward. It wasted so much time. You know that, that saying, get in late, get out early? I was doing the opposite. I was getting in early, way early. For some reason, I felt that it would be unnatural if I just started a dialogue conversation where it needed to start. Um, or, you know, even now, like having this understanding that if there's only one important line of dialogue in a scene, I can just show that one important line. I don't even need the full conversation around it. I was burying the, the good stuff of my dialogue or at least the relevant, because I don't think it was good. But the stuff that was actually plot relevant, I was burying it in like just pages upon pages of fluff and it was so awkward to read. And number five is that I was scared to be overt. Clarity was a big issue for me in my writing. For many, many years, it was something that my professors were always uh, dinging me on and calling me out on in university. I don't think I ever workshopped a piece in university that didn't have at least one major clarity concern. It honestly wasn't until one specific prof that I had who really like, he was like, you have to work on clarity. Like it's, it's the main, like he was really like the main thing impeding your writing is clarity. I remember like getting a story back from him and he was like, you know, if, if this story didn't have these clarity issues, it would be publishable. But he said in his feedback, he was like, this is literally a publishable story. But if I were reading it as an editor, I would have stopped reading in the first paragraph because I would have been too confused. I had this one prof who really was the one who got me to kind of 
crack down on my clarity issues and start really working on that because I think it was the main thing harping my writing for a while there. Also, a very hard, sometimes a hard thing to spot, right? Because it makes sense to you. So it's hard to know when it won't make sense to someone else. So I had a lot of unintentional clarity issues, right? Like stuff that just made sense to me. I didn't realize that it wasn't conveying. But I also had a lot of clarity issues arose because I was afraid to just say things. I was so afraid of telling. I was so afraid of exposition. And I think a lot of writers have these fears because as a new writer, you're taught those things are bad. I would argue that not telling enough can be as much of a problem as telling too much. The fear of telling can lead to making your writing very abstract and hard to understand. I was so afraid to state things. I remember reading an essay in school once that said that the basic unit of a story is information. Like a story is being conveyed through units of information. And when I think understanding that and reading that really helped me realize that I don't need to be afraid of information. A story is literally made up of, in, of bits of information. Kind of felt that everything had to be implicit. It had to be implied. You know, I would never let my characters even come close to doing something like stating their goal or motivation or anything. I was so scared of telling emotions. You know, it did teach me how to show, I think, but it also made my writing very hard to understand and very abstract. And I think sometimes you need to say things. Sometimes you need to tell. Sometimes you need exposition. And as long as it's written well, I, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so I think this is probably the most common one of this list, a really common one, fear of being overt because we're taught we can't be overt. Thinking so much about how to make things subtle that you bury it so deep in the story that it is imperceptible to a reader. And that's what was happening to me. I had all these themes and ideas and things I was exploring about my character and it was never conveying to readers because I was burying it so deep in the story that literally it couldn't be perceived. So what, what was the point of all this work I was putting in to make it subtle if it was literally so subtle you couldn't perceive it? One of the biggest lessons I've learned as I've gotten better as a writer is actually to tell more. You know, learning to show really important, um, but learning to just state information for clarity's sake and also for interest sake, like sometimes that stuff is interesting and it can be explored on the page in an interesting way. Not everything needs to be conveyed through a glance, right? Like this isn't a silent film. Like you can have things, information can be stated, it can be shared, it can be unpacked. Sometimes ideas need to be unpacked through words on the page, not just through symbolism, right? Um, but I was so scared of doing that because I thought it would make my work overt that it was just causing massive clarity issues and my stories weren't conveying anything to anyone because it was just so buried. So those are five more misconceptions that I had about writing craft. Uh, I would love to hear things you didn't understand about writing craft in the comments below. This is a safe space. It's okay to have things that you didn't understand right at, at whatever point in time and um, it's impossible to become a good writer without making mistakes, writing bad stuff, going through this journey. There's nothing wrong with that. So I hope that my mistakes can maybe be at least funny. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.